Welcome, I'm Bob Kennedy, the director of the Davidson Institute, and I'm happy to uh, be talking today with Simon Winter. Simon is the uh, Senior Vice President for Development at TechnoServe, which is a very interesting organization. They do a lot of development work in Africa and in South America and other places. Um, in his role as Senior Vice President, he's in charge of leading and managing strategy, knowledge management, strategy planning, program development, and leading fundraising and partnership. So welcome, Simon. Thank you. Uh, so TechnoServe is a, an interesting organization. I think a lot of people have heard the name, but don't really know what they do. So can you give us the, you know, the two-minute history and overview of your operations? Yes. So we were founded in 1968 by a, a Connecticut businessman, Ed Bullard, uh, who had a couple of years earlier spent a year in Ghana, uh, just after that country had become independent. And he observed two things that were lacking in the community in which he was working, running a hospital. Uh, one thing was uh, a knowledge of how to run a business, uh, and secondly was a knowledge of technology uh, and how to apply it uh, to add value to one's products. Um, and he thought if he could put together an organization that would help poor people in the developing world be able to get those skills and apply them uh, to build businesses, uh, that would be a good thing uh, to help to reduce poverty. Um, and that's what he did. He started Techno7 in 1968 with exactly that in mind. Um, Focused on Ghana originally? Or? Uh, our first country operation opened in Ghana in 1971, and we're still in Ghana. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Haven't solved the problem. No, right? <laughs> so I was going to say, so for 30 years we, we, we spent a long time learning how not to do it. <laughs> well, <laughs> and. Um, uh, no, and we, I think we had good transitory impact, but not sustainable impact. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. For the last 10 to 12 years, we've been on what I would describe as a more holistic approach. Um, and what I mean by that is that we are looking at trying to find the right business models, uh, get those business models into the hands of entrepreneurial people who can actually build businesses, whether they are farmers or building a farmer organization, or whether they are family entrepreneurs who are building a processing plant or a trading business or other business, um, and then helping those businesses become competitive and sustainable. Right. Um, so I know. So that's our major focus. I mean, having spent a fair amount of time on these types of projects, tech, I've seen TechnoServe is quite different than most other NGOs or development organizations. So. Can you just describe what might be a typical project? Um, you know, it's not that you come in and just do training programs or something, right? It's a whole, a whole set of activities aimed at a sector. So. Exactly. Um, so let me give you an example of uh, our fruit work in East Africa right now, which is a partnership between us and the Gates Foundation and Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. and then some local enterprises. Um, so this came about because Coca-Cola is uh, interested in buying mangoes and passion fruit in East Africa because they want to launch juice products uh, into those markets. Uh, the farmers who can produce those fruits are small farmers um, who don't know how to farm those things uh, as effectively and, and as productively and as uh, the right sort of quality level that Coca-Cola will need. Mm -hmm. So we diagnosed the opportunity uh, along with uh, other partners at the Gates Foundation and, and with Dahlberg, uh, Global Development Advisors. Consulting firm, right? A yes. consulting firm uh, that specializes in this area. Um, and uh, we worked out how to uh, help these farmers uh, put together businesses based around an aggregation point, uh, what we okay. call a farmer business group. So the starting point would be a bunch of very smallholder farmers with a little bit mm -hmm. of land and a few fruit trees, but they don't have connections to the markets. They don't exactly. They're not organized. The farmers aren't organized, so mm -hmm. they can't access inputs. They can't access finance, and they don't know who the who the buyers are, and they don't know uh, where to go and find the buyers. Right. They're isolated. So by organizing them together and helping to train them and helping them build a business that can then link them both to the sources of finance and inputs that they need to be able to get the right varieties and to be able to grow them in the right way, and then on the output market side to be able to link them directly to the buyers in a very efficient way, uh, we can create a competitive base for that industry. Okay, so in business school lingo, it's you're taking people just in one value activity and you're kind of building out the value chain both exactly. towards the inputs and then towards the ultimate buyers. Exactly, that's right. And what types of services do you provide? You know, in addition to training, do you actually provide financing yourself? Or? We don't provide the financing yeah. ourselves. We will help the farmers uh, in terms of training them how to organize and how to mm -hmm. run the business and how to put together a business plan, and then we will go with them to people who will provide the finance. Um, okay. and and we will help to broker the access to the finance. And 
if the financiers need the business plan to be tweaked in a certain way or, or whatever, we can then work with the farmers to help them get to the point where they can actually access the finance. Okay. So you mentioned fruit in East Africa. Can you just give us a few other examples? Not, not to dive into them, but just other types of things. Sure. A lot of our work is in agriculture, or at least has an agricultural base. So, yes. uh, and we have tended over the last decade or so to focus on what you might call the higher value crops. So horticultural fresh products uh, are, are a big area. Mm -hmm. Another area is uh, livestock and poultry. Um, so we've done poultry work, we've done dairy work, uh, we've done livestock work. Uh, another area is tree crops, like nuts, cashew nuts in mm -hmm. particular has been a great success story for us in Mozambique. Right. Um, and um, coffee, uh, cocoa, uh, and tea, um, also are, are other high value products. With the whole global emphasis on food security now, over the last two to three years, we've been starting to look much more at staple crops as well. And we're starting to do a number of programs in things like rice and sorghum uh, and uh, maize and, uh, okay. and so on. Okay, so I know, so the, this value chain work, that's one broad area, and TechnoServe also works in entrepreneurship, which is related, but I think different, right? Exactly, so one of the things that we learned over the first 30 years of not quite getting it right was that uh, there are just a great shortage of entrepreneurial people who really have a, the self-confidence and self-esteem to be able to go out and even try and build a business, and then secondly, the skills mm -hmm. to be able to actually build that business. Um, and if you're only working in the domain of a particular value chain, you're not really going to change the culture around entrepreneurship um, that's going to elicit an environment where people are going to come forward and want to build businesses mm -hmm. in much larger numbers. With, with their own ideas, perhaps, exactly. in different sectors. Uh, right? Exactly. Different yeah. sectors, multiple yeah. sectors. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, where you can also then build programs that are more generally around the enabling environment for that uh, mm -hmm. set of entrepreneurs to be successful. Okay. Um, so we've started broader platform of activities around entrepreneurship development more generally in, in the last 10 years. And the acti what type of activities would you do to do the, the broader The thing stuff? that we've done most uh, has been business plan competitions. Mm -hmm. And these are not just competitions. These are really capacity building events that take place over about 18 months. So ah. they start with a competition. They start with a solicitation of ideas from entrepreneurial people. Uh, we then put the people with high potential, both in terms of individual characteristics as well as their business idea, mm -hmm. we put them through a competitive process. But it's, uh, they have a mentor, they go through a formal training process that lasts a couple of months, and they get screened out and judged and get feedback and so on. And then the successful guys get about a year of aftercare. And that aftercare is a combination of access to further support services to mm -hmm. help them tailor their business plan, get their business registered, uh, get some audited accounts in place, put in place a in management information system, and so on, and then also help with access to finance. Okay. So, and where are you doing this? In multiple countries? Or? Multiple countries, yeah. We've done it in many countries in Central America, Latin America. We have a regional program now with the Inter-American Development Bank and J.P. Morgan and others in Latin America, uh, in, in multiple countries in Africa, and we've done one pilot in India as well. Okay, so I know that people are, you know, many of the people watching this video would be familiar with, for example, USAID or DFID. And then perhaps some other NGOs, many of which are relief-oriented, right? Right. Uh, how does, how does uh, TechnoServe either interact with those types of organizations, or how do you differ from them? Uh, we, I think what sets us apart is the way that we combine skills. Um, and we bring essentially three groups of skills together in terms of the work we do. So number one is people with very strong, high-quality uh, business and finance backgrounds. So we bring in a lot of people from top management consulting firms uh, or top financial institutions. Mm -hmm. Second group is people with technical skills. Uh, as I mentioned before, a lot of work in agriculture, so we have a lot of people who've worked in agribusiness and so on. Uh, and then thirdly, it's people who understand how to make change happen in their local environments. So 92% of our staff in the countries of operation are from those countries. And okay. they are people who understand their local culture and the local environment and how to convince people to change their behaviors and so okay. on. And so it's that combination that I think is unique. So you're headquartered in D.C. and you have a staff there, but the bulk of the people are in-country Yeah, we're programs, close to 900 right? people worldwide now, and mm -hmm. um, about 850 of those are in <laughs> the 23 countries where we operate. Okay, and how does and where does your funding come from? I mean, do is it donations on the internet or uh, how do you? Do we that? would love it to be donations <laughs> on the internet. We'll get to that later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, 
No, most of it at the moment is from institutional donors that want to see the kind of work we do happen. Mm -hmm. um, so Gates Foundation has become a very big supporter mm -hmm. of ours. 42% uh, of our budget this year is from Gates. Uh, about 30% from the U.S. government through USAID and the U.S. Department of Agriculture. The balance is corporations, it's private individuals, it's small foundations and so on. Like Coke and the example. Yeah, Coca-Cola, right. for example, is funding half that program. Okay, and if uh, people were interested in learning more either about TechnoServe or opportunities to get involved, how would they do that? Well, the easiest is to go to our website. Uh, so our website is uh, www.technoserve, with an E at the end of it, uh, .org. And um, we'll put a link at the bottom of this story as well. So thank you, Simon. Very interesting, and we look forward to your talk later today. Thank you very much.